there guys, what's up? Ragto here, welcoming you back to the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online. It's that time again, the time where we open boosters and hope for something amazing. So today we have some uncommon reward chests. We've got one Ancient Origins, two Break Points, a Breakthrough, one Primal Clash, and one Roaring Sky, so we got a nice big variety going on here. To start us off, I'm gonna crack one of the Break Points, just to hold your attention. Just to get you invested nice and early with the new stuff. So come on, something good, something great, give me a reason to celebrate. Ooh, two rares. Two rares, ooh, here we go. Ooh, and... Ugh. I literally hate this Ferrothorn card. Every time it comes up, it, it's bad, it's not a good card. Okay, so Ferrothorn here has 100 HP. And Metal Claw for 40, with 1 Metal and 1 Colorless Energy, and Spike Clash. This attack does 10 more damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon for each Colorless Energy in that Pokemon's Retreat cost. No matter... Look, it, it can be used for some chip damage. Like this Growlithe, that's gonna do 20 damage. That's okay. That is not the worst. Palpitoad, it'll do 30 here. But for most Pokemon, like this Rattata... Like this Sigilyph, it's only gonna it will rarely do more than four. So it's just not worth it to attach this much energy or commit a special energy to it to evolve a Ferrisseed and to use this attack. I just I don't like this card. But Trevenant Break, on the other hand, however. So Trevenant Break follows the Break Evolution rule. Trevenant Break retains the attack's abilities, weaknesses, resistance, and retreat cost of its previous evolution. So you basically slap this onto your Trevenant card and it'll become golden, bigger, badder, stronger, and with a new attack, Silent Fear. Put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. Three damage counters regardless. Do you see how- oh, oops, I punched the pop filter, sorry. Do you see how that compares to Ferrothorn here? A variable amount of damage on each of your Poke opponent's Pokemon, or three damage counters across the entire board for one less energy, so that makes it a lot better in that regard. Trevenant Break is much bulkier, though you do have to evolve it once more to get it to the stage. And Trevenant Break has other attacks that Trevenant can bring. In fact, you can evolve multiple Trevenant from different sets to get this, and there are lots of Trevenant cards out there that are really cool and has some really neat effects. So, Travenant Break gets the ace over Ferrothorn. Sorry. <laughs> Professor Sycamore, discard your hand and draw seven cards. You will see between three and four copies of this guy in pretty much every deck. Either him or Professor Juniper if you go back to the black and white days. It's just a good way to get lots of cards and maybe get rid of some ones you don't need. Then we have Palpitoad with 90 HP and Frog Hop. Flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 20 more damage, coming off a of base 20, and Mudshot for 60. It's a middle child card, it's never gonna be anything special. And then we have Sigilyph, with Reflective Shield during your opponent's next turn. If this Pokemon is damaged by an attack, even if this Pokemon is knocked out, put 5 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. And Psy Report, your opponent reveals his or her hand, dealing 30 damage. It's not a great card, it's more of a kitchen top counter card, but it can definitely be used to harass your opponent and try and keep them from attacking your Pokemon. Could be a neat way to prevent some setup, but it's not very reliable. But, kind of neat all, uh, all the same, <clears throat> excuse me, all the same. Then we have Rattata with 30 HP and Dangerous Suspicion. Draw a card, switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Aw, oh, cute little cuties. Wait, I never read the- I never read this top row of cards, because these are all commons. And they rarely do anything interesting like that. Although that's kind of a neat effect, being able to draw a card. But, eh. Could be better. Then we have- this is actually one of my favorite card arts. You've got this Legend of Zelda looking Aegis- or Honedge, rather. Like the Master Wood- Master Sword found in the Lost Woods. I can't talk tonight, I'm sorry guys. Then we have an angry looking Growlithe, probably squaring off against somebody. A ferocious, a ferocious looking Electabuzz, fire, uh, firing off an electric attack. God, my allergies are so bad tonight. And then we have an Esper, looking so cute and wovey. Alright, so we're not going to open another one of those just yet. We're going to save the breakpoint for last. In the meantime, let's crack open these uncommon reward chests. Ooh, we got a rare. What could it be? 
A Lopunny, big jump. Once during your turn before you attack, you may return this Pokemon and all cards attached to it to your hand. And sit down, bounce, flip a coin. If tails, this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. I think this was actually put into starter decks back in the day, or into the theme decks rather. It's okay. It's certainly not great, but it did get the job done actually. It was kind of neat. Because at that level, 80 damage is a lot, so Lopini actually came through a couple times when I was just starting out, and that was all I had. Ooh, another rare. We're getting tokens and rares. Oh, this is a good card. This is a really good card. This is Halucha with 70 HP and Shining Spirit. Damage from this Pokemon's attacks isn't affected for, uh, by weakness or resistance, so it'll always do the 60 unless you power it up with tool cards. And for one fighting energy, you get Flying Press. If your opponent's active Pokemon isn't a Pokemon EX, this attack does nothing. So you, the idea behind Halucha is to put it into your deck as a pretty good revenge killer against Pokemon EXs that have been heavily damaged. So you can pretty reliably bring in Halucha. That 60 damage could be used to pick off most Pokemon EX once they've taken a powerful attack or two. And it'll net you some easy prizes. It only takes one energy to set up. And it has no retreat cost. So there's no real reason not to run this Halucha if you're running a fighting type deck. It's just that good. <laughs> it's so good, I love it. And I'm very happy to have another uh, card because I only had one copy of it. So here we have a Whiskash. When you attach an energy card from your hand to this Pokemon, except with an attack, ability, or trainer card, you may attach two energy cards. So that's neat. It has Water Gun for 40, but it costs three, which is pretty inefficient. But I guess with this ability, you only have to do that twice, but even still, that's a committing that's committing three. And then Earthquake. This attack does 20 damage to each of your benched Pokemon. The idea behind this is that it's a very fast aggressive attack. Wishcash is a stage one Pokemon, so you can get it out really quickly and deal a lot of damage with minimal effort, basically. Because there are a lot of ways to get water type energy up and front in the current meta. So you can rely on Wishcash to knock out some early Pokemon, it's pretty good. Oh, and that's another card I'm happy to see. Archie's Ace in the Hole, you can only play this card when it is the last card in your hand. Put a water type Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench, then draw five cards. The usual shtick with these is that it doesn't have to be a Pokemon that needs to evolve. To put that another way, imagine you have a Gyarados in your discard pile. You can play Archie's Ace in the Hole and Gyarados will come on to the bench or yeah it'll come onto the bench without having to evolve from a Magikarp or Blastoise. It can do that without having to evolve from Wartortle who doesn't have to evolve from Squirtle. You can just skip the evolution entirely. So Archie and Maxi, very cool strategies with those two and you can set up some really amazing combos or powerful benched Pokemon without having to commit their uh, evolutions. So let's crack open the Primal Clash next. Come on, something good, something great. Give me a reason to celebrate. Ooh, that doesn't bode well. I've got all these already. Here we go. Ooh, a Sharpedo EX. With 170 HP and Hunt. Switch one of your opponent's benched Pokemon with his or her active Pokemon. This attack does 30 damage to the new active Pokemon. And Jagged Fang. Discard an energy attached to this Pokemon, then discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So that might seem a bit detrimental, but with Dark-type decks, there's actually a lot of ways to get the energy on to Pokemon like Sharpedo EX. You can set up a lot of cool strategies with this, and you can also deny your opponent some necessary energy. So I like Sharpedo EX a lot. I can't remember the last time I saw it see a lot of competitive play, but I think it's really cool, and I really like it. Then we have a Groudon Spirit Link. Your turn does not end if the Pokemon this card is attached to becomes Primal Groudon EX. Pretty much essential if you're running Primal or Mega Evolutions because when you run them and you try to evolve them, your turn ends. So these cards prevent you from losing a lot of momentum by having those cards. 
Then we have an escape rope, one of my favorite item cards actually. Each player switches his or her active Pokemon with one of his or her benched Pokemon. Your opponent switches first. If a player does not have a benched Pokemon, he or she doesn't have to switch. This is one of the most disruptive cards in the game, and if you play it right, you can get a very powerful Pokemon into your active slot, and a very vulnerable Pokemon into your opponent's active slot. Very cool. Then we have Masquerain with 80 HP and Spiral Gyration. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. That would be good if it dealt some damage, but just leaving it with confusion. Eh. And then Air Slash for two double colorless, or one double colorless rather. 50 damage, discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. Eh. Just eh all around. Kitchen top counter card. Then we have a Gardevoir Spirit Link. Works the same way as the Groudon Spirit Link. Your turn does not end if the Pokemon this card is attached to. Becomes Mega Gardevoir EX. And now, the cutes. Look at the Vulpix. Oh, it's so pretty. With the flowers. Oh, I want one so bad. And look at these Happy Shroomish. I've never seen a Happy Shroomish before. But look at the delight on that one's face. Oh, it's precious. I like the art on this one, actually. It kind of looks like it should be textured. I wonder if the physical card has that texture on it. Ooh, I want to touch it now. I want to see. Oh, look at the Mudkip. Oh, he's looking up like a little mud puppy. Oh, I love him so much. Oh, I want to give it a hug. Oh, and look at Lotad. He's all shiny. He just came out of the water. He's all clean. Love him. Love him, love him, love him. I forget which comes next. Is it Ancient Origins or Roaring Skies? Ah, we'll crack open Ancient Origins first. Alright, something good, something great. Give me a reason to celebrate, come on! Aww. Alright, one rare. Come on. Good rare, good rare, good rare, good rare! Ah, uh, Porygon Z. With 130 HP. And Cyber Crush, discard all special energy attached to each of your opponent's Poke- Oh my god. <laughs> that's- That's kind of brutal, actually. And Slowing Beam, during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon's attacks cost one colorless more. See, I've never seen this Porygon Z card hit competitive play, and I wonder if it's just because it's a stage 2 Pokemon, and by the time it gets out, it might not have the biggest impact. I don't know, I really like the look of this, though. Like, it doesn't seem competitively viable, but it seems like a neat trick you could put into your deck to mess with your opponent. Because making them attach one energy more could be very disruptive to their other potential strategies. And 70 damage isn't the worst, but for 3 energy, you could do a lot better. I don't know. I kind of want to mess with it, play with it a little bit. See what I can do. Then we have, for our reverse holo, a ball toy. With slap and spinning attack for 10 to 20, respectively. We actually have the same card over there. Then we have a Hex Maniac, one of the more interesting cards to come out of this set. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, each Pokemon in play, in each player's hand, and in each player's discard pile, has no abilities. This includes cards that come into play on that turn. So basically, there are a lot of incredibly disruptive abilities out there. Like, there's a Pyroar that won't take damage from a basic Pokemon's attacks, and a lot of Pokemon that are built as the backbone of decks are basic Pokemon. And there's really no way to stop them other than technically working around the ability, like evolving your basic Pokemon, which doesn't always work. Hex Maniac gives you a means of dealing damage to those Pokemon, or working around those disruptive abilities, or putting a stop to your opponent's energy game without having to commit a stupid amount of cards to your deck. Hex Maniac definitely... Definitely deserves a tech spot. One or two of these belong in pretty much every deck. If you have problems with those kinds of abilities, of course. Then we have the Forest of Giant Plants. Each player's Grass-type Pokémon can evolve during his or her first turn, or the turn he or she plays those Pokémon. Really, really good way to get Grass-type Pokémon onto the board and uh, fully evolved as quickly as possible, because Grass-type Pokémon tend to be commonly weak to fire, they have low amounts of HP, you want them evolved, you want them out there quickly, and this works best, I think, with Combi and Vespaquin, because Combi's amazingly low HP leaves it really vulnerable to being sniped by cards like Golbat and Crobat. Forest of the Giant Plants, 
let you get your Vespaquin out that much sooner. Then we have a level ball. Search your deck for Pokemon with 90 HP or less, reveal it and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. Again, a lot of decks rely on Pokemon with 90 HP or less, at least to get started or to get the ball rolling or to even draw them cards. There are a lot of cards like Octillery and Remoraid that fit into this category. Wait, I can't remember if Octillery itself has that, but you can use this to go get Remoraid so that you can evolve your Octillery easier. There's a lot of uses for this, and right now the big use is getting Night March Pokemon and getting Vespaquin and Combi. So all in all, great card, depending on your deck. <laughs> Then we have Ball Toy. This is actually a pretty cool action shot. I'm not really sure what Ball Toy is doing or where it's going, but it looks cool while doing it. Then we have Sleepy Little Katini. It's so cute, I want to give it a hug. Then we have a Saluting Golek. Thank you for your service, sir. And a Golet. One day I'm going to be a big, cool Golark just like him. And a School of Relicanth. Just chilling out, maxing, relaxing, being all ancient. Relicanth is cool. In a weird way, but it's cool. Now, Roaring Skies. Now, I have a card that I've been looking for in Roaring Skies forever. I don't want to say its name because I don't want to jinx it. But, please, Arceus, I'm asking you. Please give me the card that I'm looking for. You know what it is. I've been on trades for the last three weeks looking for a copy of this card. It would mean so much to me if I could open it right here. And right now, please, please, two rares. That's not it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's not it either. Dust Ox. If your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack with its Pokemon, take one more prize card. Flap for 20, and Wind Shard. This attack does 50 damage to one of your opponent's banished Pokemon. Eh. Fairly mediocre all around. Certainly not worth the rare slot in my booster pack, where I could have gotten a Shaman EX. Oh. Then we have Banette. You may play this card from your hand to evolve a Pokemon during your first turn, or the turn you play that Pokemon. Then you have Evolution Jammer. Your opponent can't play any Pokemon from his or her hand to evolve his or her Pokemon during his or her next turn. So really, the way you want to use this, and this is actually really powerful, is you want to let your opponent go first. Then on your turn, you evolve Shuppet, you use this Evolution Jammer, and you stop your opponent from gaining a lot of momentum right away. This is a pretty cool card, all things considered. I have no idea how competitively viable it really is at the end of the day. I don't see it that often, but I think against the right deck, it could be really cool. And then Curse Deeply. Put five damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. And this is really cool because for two energy, you're doing 50 damage. Coming off of Evolution Jammer, you can do 70 damage on the first turn, or on the second turn, rather. And there are not a lot of basic Pokemon, which Bennett obviously wants to square off against because it's stopping evolution that can take 70 damage so you can net yourself some early KOs with this I like it a lot I might try to make a dedicated deck around it but I don't know how well it's gonna work out then we have double dragon energy this card can only be attached to dragon type Pokemon this card provides every type of energy but only provides two energy at a time only while this card is attached to a dragon type Pokemon so the idea behind this is that dragon types, like Bagon here, use two different kinds of energy to attack. That can be tricky to set up sometimes, and if, you're luck, if luck isn't on your side, it won't always work out. Double dragon energy circumvents this. By attaching this one special energy to this Bagon here, you can now use almost flight right away. Not that you would want to, because that's a bad attack, but you could do it. Mega Turbo, attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your Mega Evolution Pokemon. Pretty much a staple if you're running Mega Evolution Pokemon. It's a good way, since they are often the target of energy removing cards like the Team Flare Grunt, to get energy onto them, or to get energy onto them in the first place by using cards like Battle Compressor or Ultra Ball to put it into your discard pile in the first place. All in all, great card. Then you have Togetic. 
with 80 HP and go fetch. Shuffle 3 basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck and fairy wind for 40. Eh, middle child card, but it's got some neat card art. It's very beautiful. Then we've got Happy Wingles! Oh, I love him. I want to give him hugs. want to walk around with one on my shoulder and make, <laughs> make myself look like a pirate. Then we've got an Inke stealing from a poor Meowth. What a bully! You're a bully! Meany, 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 Inke. Then we've got some Executes coming under attack from a Spearow. That's not cool. And their attack is Loathe? What? so weird. Then we've got that Spearow who's eyeing up those Execute, gonna go beat him up. Calm down, Spearow, alright? These Execute, they've got emotional problems, you need to relax. And we've got a... Oh, I get it. He's upset because the rocket can fly and he can't. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, now I'm upset. Alright, now we're gonna crack open this breakthrough card, or breakthrough pack, rather. Alright, come on, something good, something great. Give me a reason to celebrate, please. <laughs> please, I'm begging you. Just one rare this time, and... Ooh, it's actually not a bad one. This is Zoroark. With 100 HP, it has stand-in. Once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch this Pokemon with your active Pokemon. And Mind Jack. This attack does 30 more damage for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So there are a couple ways to use the Zoroark card. First of all, Stand-In will let you switch this in with your active Pokemon if it's currently suffering from, say, confusion, or if it's asleep, or if it's poisoned, you can bring Zoroark in and it will remove those status conditions from your Pokemon. Keldeo EX used to be used to much the same effect, but that's fallen off standard. So if you are really in need of something like that, you can patch in Zoroark. And Zoroark only attacks with double colorless energy, so... You can actually get mileage from this in any deck, really, if you really need it. And if you're running a Sky Field and you can get your opponent to load up his bench with Pokemon, this is definitely not bad. And in fact, even if you only have five Pokemon, that's... Or if your opponent only has five Pokemon on his or her bench, that's still... Uh, wait. 30? 60? 90? 120, 150, plus 10, 160. Alright, I had to do some mental math there for a second. I don't know if you could tell. But that's still 160 damage for 2 energy, which is actually stupidly efficient. That's really, 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 really good. So honestly, I could see the Zorark seeing a lot of play. Then our reverse holo is a hungry little Chespin. Aww, oh, look at him trying to get the fruit. Then we have Bridget. Search your deck for one basic Pokemon EX, or three basic Pokemon except for Pokemon EX, and put them onto your bench. Shuffle your deck afterward. Bridget works best with decks that need a lot of Pokemon to get set up with. Like, say, if you're running a Metal-type deck and you need copies of Bronzong and Mr. Mime and all that. Bridget's a great way to get them out, and if your deck happens to have a Pokemon EX for its mainstay, Bridget can help you go get that as soon as the first turn. Then we have Spupa, with 70 HP and Protect, flip a coin if heads prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn, and tackle for 30. It's a middle child card, nothing too special. Then we have a Skyla, search your deck for a trainer card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. Pretty good way to get a necessary trainer card, like an Ultra Ball or Professor's Letter, anything like that and get yourself some nice momentum. It's also some decent deck thinning, but I haven't seen Skyla in popular rotation in a while, so I don't know how good she still is. Then we have an exhausted Meowth. Someone get it some water, Oh, We've got a beautiful Flabebe card. What is going on here? That's so pretty. We got a chill looking Goldeen. A reckless Goldeen apparently though. Then we've got, <laughs> I love this Pan Sage. I can't decide. It, it, he kind of looks like he's memeing. Like he's memeing on somebody. He's like, hi! I don't know, I just, I love this card art, and I can't decide why. And a ghastly. Just chilling out in somebody's study. That's kind of creepy, ghastly. Go get a hobby. And then we end on one last breakpoint pack. Alright. <sighs> something good. Something great. Give me a reason 
to celebrate, please. Please, I'm begging you. I mean, we've gotten some good cards, but I want a great card. So come on. Oh, only one rare. Come on. Come on. Something big. Something good. That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> we have a Gyarados EX with 100 HP in Stormy Seas. Flip a coin until you get tails. For each heads, search your deck for a water type energy card and attach it to this Pokemon. Shuffle your deck afterward and splash burn. This attack does 10 damage to each of your benched Pokemon for 130. Don't apply weakness and resistance for benched Pokemon. This. I, I, I've never seen this card art before, and it's so cool. You got Greninja, you got Manaphy, just hanging out with a big old Gyarados. Oh, I love him. I love him so much. I'm so happy to see this. I want to make a Mega Gyarados EX deck, and as soon as I have the cards to do it, it, it it's going to be on the channel so much. This is a step in the right direction, though. Look at how cool this card art is. Oh, my God. I'm so happy that I got this. It looks so good. Look at it. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Forget the rest of this pack. It's all stupid compared to this card. <laughs> if they didn't put a drum roll sound effect in the background, I would read out the other cards before I open the rare. But it's like, it's an incessant drumming, so you want to open the rare as soon as possible. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy we got to end on that card. Look at that! Anyway, I'll just take a look at the others. Our reverse holo is Cricketot with Bug Hunt. Search your deck for up to three grass type Pokemon. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. And Tierno, draw three card. Delinquent, discard any stadium card in play. If you do, your opponent discards three cards from his or her hand. It's a pretty good way to bomb your opponent, either by turning their stadium against them, or by turning your stadium into a milling weapon, basically. Once you don't need it anymore. If you don't need it anymore, that is. And then we have the Splash Energy. This card can, this card can only be attached to Water-type Pokémon. This card provides Water-type Energy only while this card is attached to a Water-type Pokémon. If the Water-type Pokémon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, Put that Pokemon into your hand, discard all cards attached to it. So that's a pretty good way to make sure that you have access to your big heavy hitters like Gyarados EX, but it also gets you water type energy into your discard pile, and there are ways of getting energy out of the discard pile and onto your Pokemon, and this energy just, it, it's not the best of the special energies. But it's definitely up there for general utility. It's pretty neat, I like it. And then we have a fabulous looking Drowsy. A cheerful looking course though, it looks like it's on a stage with a spotlight on it, it's very neat. The most action packed Pharisee you will ever see. I have no idea what it's doing or how it's doing it, but it's cool. We have two copies of Cricketot in this pack, and it's honestly the most intense Pokemon card I've ever seen. What's going through your head, Cricketot? What are you dealing with? What's going on? And we have an adorable little Esper. And I just, oh my god. I want to look at this card all day. It's so good. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that you exist and that you're mine. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So happy to have that. If you guys have enjoyed this episode, then please let me know with a like and a comment down below telling me just how much fun you've had. Let me know which card we opened was your favorite. Was it the shiny Gyarados Full Art EX awesome Mega Guard? <laughs> or was it that Sharpedo EX that we opened? Or maybe that Zoroark? Mine was the Gyarados. I don't know if you could tell. That's my man Gyarados right there. Mm-mm-mm. Ah. Until next time, guys, be sure to take care and have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye bye